Hey, good morning again, everybody. Renee here, and once again today, I'm at the home of Bob and Arlene Arbach, and these guys are wonderful people who attend Twin Lakes Church, host a Bible study at their house of people who are Jewish, from a Jewish background like Arlene, who are believers in Jesus as Messiah. And I wanted to talk to Arlene about Jesus and about Passover because this last weekend we talked about Jesus celebrating Passover. That's and that's right. what really turned into the Last Supper, communion, the Eucharist uh, that we Christians celebrate. It's interesting how many times the gospel writers clarify, it was Passover, everybody, like in Mark. <laughs> It says, on the first day of the Passover, it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb. Jesus' disciples asked him, where do you want to eat the Passover? So when he sent his disciples saying, find a guest room where I meet the Passover. And they found these just as he had told them. So they prepared the Passover. <laughs> it's almost humorous how many times Mark says, hey, everybody who's reading this, it was the Passover. He really wants us readers to get this, that there was this Jewish tie to this Jewish festival. That's where our roots are as Christians. And that's why I wanted to talk to Arlene who, as a Jewish friend about the Passover, who, that you celebrate as a, as a Jewish person, you've celebrated it and what it means to you. And we were talking about one of the things that's so important to you is telling the story yes. over and over, generation to generation. Yes. Tell me a little bit well, about that. Well, that's the Jewish tradition. When the temple was destroyed, the people went to their homes and celebrated all of the different traditions and rituals and, and said the prayers in their homes around the table and shared a meal with their family and friends. And that's gone on forever and it continues today. All around the world, there are Jewish people celebrating the Sabbath on Friday night saying the Kiddush, lighting the candles, saying the blessing over the challah bread and the wine. And during Passover, they are celebrating the exile of the Jewish people from Egypt being liberated by Moses and um, for, as slaves being free from their leader of the Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a beautiful story. It's a big meal. We, of course, we have our special meal and our special foods because we have to have unleavened bread because mm -hmm. they were in such a rush. They didn't have time mm -hmm. for the bread to rise right. on That's their right. journey. So we have matzah and we, we don't eat leavened bread for a whole week, eight days. And um, there's lots of foods, matzah ball soup and on and on and on I could go. But eating the meal, the traditional Passover meal and telling the story every year is Essential. You know, it's interesting when I've been researching the history of Passover of the Seder, uh, as it's known today, and uh, a lot of things changed. You know, they did. They probably didn't have matzo ball soup, you know, in Jesus's day. <laughs> but you know what? They did. What's exactly the same is they told the story. That's they right. told the story, and uh, how important that is for us as as Christians to keep telling the story, the story of God and His love for us, the story of how Jesus came as a ransom for us, the story of God's grace and his sacrificial, unconditional love. It's that story that's compelling. Yes. It's that story that's going to win people to the Lord. I'm convinced of this. We, we were blessed to be guests here at the Arbach's house uh, this last Friday for a Shabbat meal. And it was intriguing, Arlene, because there were several guests who were not uh, believers in Jesus. In fact, they were yes, atheists. That's right. A couple of older people who said, you know, I was growing up as a Jewish person on the East Coast. My atheist's par parents celebrated the Seder with us and told that's us right. the story. And then as an atheist myself, an atheist agnostic, one woman said, I celebrated the Seder every year with my kids and passed along the story. Intriguingly, their children were there and their children, after two generations of atheists, their children are believers, yes. not only Jewish believers, but also believers in Jesus as Messiah. How is it possible for two generations of atheists in a row to raise believers? Well, one of the ways it's possible is they still told the story. That's right. And what drew those grandchildren back to God was the story Correct. of God's love for them and God's liberation of them. And I think as Christians, sometimes we forget that. Well, well all of us forget that, right? I mean, we see mm -hmm. our kids or we see our grandkids and they're going astray. And our first impulse is to run after them and say, you're not keeping the commands. You know, you're not being righteous. But you know, nagging never works. Yes, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> as a Jewish mother, I can attest. <laughs> and what works isn't reminding people of the commands, although they're important, but you gotta mm -hmm. get, keep the horse in front of the cart and start with the story, story. Yes. of God's love for you. That's what's compelling. Correct. And what wins people back to the point where they want to 
keep kosher. They want to keep the commands because their heart has been won by the story. Yes. So I just think that's such a compelling truth. Keep telling the story of Jesus and his love for you. Tell that story to your kids and your grandkids because it's, that's the story that's magnetic and is going to pull people to him. Well, thanks, Arlene, for these chats. Oh, you're welcome, Renee. And we will see you guys uh, tomorrow for Worship Wednesday.